Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are tips in order to help speed up your recovery process when you're recovering refrigerant out of an old existing system using a recovery machine. One tip is using valve core removal tools in order to take out the valve cores at the ports of the system. If you don't take the valve cores out, then it's going to be a restriction right there. It's going to dramatically slow your recovery process down, and it's also not going to give you valid pressure and vacuum levels if you measure them on your manifold gauge set or on the digital display of a recovery machine. Tip number two is to use hoses that don't have the valve core depressor in the end. So these do not have something in the end in order to press in on a valve core. And you don't need that since you have the valve core removal tools attached to the ports. You'll have these attached to the ports holding back the refrigerant and you'll have these on the end of there. So once you're ready to recover the refrigerant, you'll open this valve and you see that there's no restriction inside and then there's no restriction in this hose either. So once this is attached to the port, you're going to screw the hose on just like this and after the entire rest of the recovery setup is attached and you're ready to purge the air and then get ready to turn the recovery machine on, you're going to then go ahead and open up the valve. So there's no restrictions in this whatsoever. Tip number three is to make sure that you keep the refrigerant hoses and restrictions to a minimum. So you could either choose to use a refrigerant manifold gauge set, or if you have an accurate compound gauge or digital display on your recovery machine, you can end up using less hoses and then therefore less restrictions. So if you were to use the manifold gauge set, you're going to need four hoses. You're going to need one for the high side, one for the low side, one to connect into the inlet of the recovery machine, and then another one to attach into the outlet of the recovery machine to go from here into the recovery tank. Whereas with the self-contained recovery unit, such as this, with a digital display, all you need is three hoses. So you just need the two hoses coming in. You need a T right here, which can be an extra or a third valve core removal tool. That can be a T. You just want to make sure that you take the valve core out of the side, such as that right there. And then all you have is just one hose coming from here to the recovery tank. So that brings your hoses down from four to three hoses and then also less restrictions because you don't have to go through this manifold here. If you want to see the full recovery process with only three hoses using this MR45, I have that video linked in the description section below. Tip number four is to make sure that you don't have any non-condensables in the tank or that you have the improper refrigerant in the tank or something like that. So you want to make sure that your pressure converted to temperature matches the actual temperature on the tank. And so this was this tank right here was pulled out of a garage. It was roughly about 60 degrees before we came to this job site. And right now you see that we're reading about 58, 59 de degrees as a green saturated temperature on this gauge. So we're converting our pressure on the outer ring to the green inner ring. That's your saturated temperature. And you see that we have our temperature sensor taped right in the bottle and we read 58, 59 degrees. So that's telling us that this re refrigerant recovery tank has the proper refrigerant in it, and there's no air or nitrogen in the tank. So if you started with a tank that had non-condensables in it, your pressure is going to be a lot higher, and your recovery machine is going to have to fight against that. You always want to make sure that you don't get air or nitrogen in the recovery tank, so it's just important to recover systems that have a, a leak only down to, to zero PSIG. Don't be sucking in air through the leak in the system into the recovery tank. You want to make sure all of your fittings are tight. You're not sucking air in there. And if you have a lot of recovery tanks at the shop, you want to make sure that these are labeled just temporarily just to make sure that you know what refrigerant's in this tank just for just an easy grab. And then you can always just check the, uh, the saturated temperature. The other thing with a recovery tank is you want to make sure that it's not going to overfill when you recover refrigerant from the system into here. So you want to make sure that <clears throat> there's enough room inside here for your new refrigerant. So this recovery tank can only be filled up to 80% of its water column capacity. So you take 47.6 times 0.8 and you come up with 38 pounds of refrigerant that you can put into this tank. So then you take 38 pounds plus the tear weight, which is the empty tank weight, and that's 27.5 pounds. So that's going to tell you how much weight you have on this tank. So what you do is you zero your scale out right here. You're going to zero this out with the recovery tank not on here and then you're going to place the recovery tank on in order to get the total weight including the refrigerant inside so you take that 27.5 pounds for your empty tank weight plus your 38 pounds of refrigerant and you're allowed to have 65.5 pounds total for your tank and refrigerant inside so right now i have my 
scale right here, I'm going to make sure it's zeroed at, at zero pounds, zero ounces. Then I'm going to go ahead and place my refrigerant tank on. So you see that our weight is 41 pounds and basically about half a pound. So you got 41 and a half pounds. So you take 65 and a half minus 41 and a half, and you're going to have 24 pounds of refrigerant that we can add into this tank safely. Another tip to help speed up the recovery process is to make sure that you have your thermostat on for fan. So you're going to have the disconnect at the outdoor condenser pulled so that the compressor doesn't turn on, but you want to have the indoor fan running. And what that'll do is that'll put that 70 degree indoor air across that evaporator quill in order for the refrigerant to have heat to absorb during your recovery process. This will help speed up the recovery by increasing the pressure and also give you a more accurate pressure or vacuum measurement on your gauges or your digital display of the recovery machine. If you're looking for any of the tools that I use in this video, I have them all linked in the description section below, and I have recovery videos that I've done linked there as well. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.